With every newly released generation of technology, we're used to performance improvements, of course. The GTX 980 to 1080 is one example. But every once in a while, a number of new technologies all release simultaneously, which help to propel gaming experiences as well as other experiences to a new level. Right now, we're seeing 3D stacking, real-time ray tracing, super-fast SSDs, and of course, upsampling technology, to name just a few, all release at roughly the same time to really allow us to experience things that we just weren't able to just a few years ago. To this end, I want to talk to you guys about a few things I've been hearing about DLSS 3 as well as FSR 2, as I feel that reconstruction technology is going to be the linchpin and what we're really going to be seeing for the next generation. Just a quick word from this video sponsor, Firstlow. If you've just built a shiny new PC, you'll need a genuine copy of Windows so you can enjoy all of the features such as personalized themes and of course getting rid of that annoying activation watermark. We're partnering with WhoKeys to give you guys great discounts on Windows 10 keys and throughout November there's a 30% off discount by using the coupon code RGT during checkout. I've purchased several keys from them in the past under a personal non-RGT affiliated account and they've all worked flawlessly with delivery being rather quick. After November the coupon code reverts back to 25% off so if you want to pick up a copy of Windows for as little as $12 or a cheap and legit copy of Office then check out the links in the video description below and use coupon code RGT. So I want to start this video out discussing DLSS 3. I've already put out one video really kind of going into some of the things I've heard about this, but now I have yet more information, so it just kind of makes sense to start there and then we can get into the nitty gritty of FSR 2. So DLSS 3 then, I think most of us can imagine it is real. After all, NVIDIA have been incrementing NVIDIA, uh, the DLSS version numbers for a while now. They released DLSS 1 and now we're at uh, DLSS 2.3, at least to the public. Recently, NVIDIA have hosted a press briefing, and of course, not only did they reveal details about DLSS 2.3, but also NVIDIA's uh, image sharpening technology. I'm going to be putting out a separate video discussing this in depth in the next couple of days, but long story short, NVIDIA are in image reconstruction for the long haul. So again, Saying that DLSS 3 is eventually going to be released is, well, pretty obvious in the grand scheme of things. During the press briefing I mentioned a moment ago, one key thing was highlighted throughout, and that is that the neural networks that NVIDIA uses to train DLSS are always learning. That's kind of the whole thing about neural networks. And a few examples that were given were things like Doom Eternal, which fixed some minor visual complaints with, for example, embers. They kind of look like little meteorites going up and down the screen, but this has been fixed, as as other games such as Cyberpunk. Basically, NVIDIA are striving for a number of things, of course, with DLSS. The first is that they want performance improvements, but they also want each iteration of DLSS to increase its visual accuracy versus a native resolution image, or ideally they want it to look even better, of course, than native resolution. And NVIDIA are facing an awful lot of competition, quote unquote, in the reconstruction space. Sure, we can look at Intel and their XESS technology, AMD and FSR, but there are also a host of other reconstruction technologies that are on the market, which do somewhat of a decent job in some instances or a really good job in other instances. So previously, I'd stated that DLSS 3 was real, but I'm not certain whether it was going to debut with Lovelace or whether it was going to release at a different time. I had been told originally by Source 1 that it would actually launch alongside RTX 40, aka Lovelace, but then a second source told me that NVIDIA may try to put out the um, DLSS 3 update earlier simply because XESS and all of the other things that you can imagine. So DLSS 3 has a number of visual quality improvements, again a pretty obvious statement, but it also has performance improvements. Curiously though, I was told that the speed up in ray tracing was faster, percentage wise anyway, than raster. To this point, and it is a pure example, let's say you have a title that's running at 60 FPS with ray tracing max, but 100 FPS with ray, ray tracing off. But if you turn DLSS to quality, you might get say 80 FPS 
with ray tracing enabled or 125 fps with dlss 2.3 but now let's say you were to run those same tests with dlss 3 the rt frame rate would proportionally increase further so you may say get 90 or even 130 fps now again they may also be speed ups in rasterization performance but what i really want you to focus on here is that the ray tracing numbers according to what i'm being told would increase higher proportionally to the rasterization performance and so this got me asking a number of people why is this because there are a number of logical reasons that we can perhaps imagine that this could be the case, but I'm trying to find out basically from my sources. So one thing I've been told is that it's almost certain that DLSS 3 basically has major advancements in denoising built into its neural network. Denoising is a pretty huge topic, but if you've had access to Quake 2 RTX, you'll know what the difference is between a noisy ray traced image and a, well, not noisy ray traced image. Quake 2 RTX is not using hybrid ray tracing, i.e. traditionally constructed scenes with ray tracing elements, for example, for shadow and lighting, but instead it uses full path tracing where everything is being generated through real-time ray tracing. Basically, denoising is required because there's a limit to the number of rays we can generate, at least at a decent frame rate. And so because we can't create enough rays at a fast enough pace, yeah, we need to do denoising, aka a kind of reconstruction. Reconstruction slash denoising, I'm going to use the term interchangeably for this video, although that's not 100% accurate, but whatever, is already capable of running on neural networks, of course. So my guess, and again, this is according to a single source, is that DLSS3 will likely have significant advancements here. How this works and how the rendering pipeline adjusts for this is going to be interesting because, again, I stress if this is true, this could actually help NVIDIA's performance metrics against RDNA 3, despite that their hardware, that is RTX 40, being seemingly slower in traditional rasterization. So I've mentioned previously, along with other people such as Grayman55, and he's generally had pretty good information, that Narve 31 in particular is going to be a performance monster. It is going to be really freaking fast. I'm hearing it could be up to three times faster than the 6900 XT. In fact, one individual told me, and this is more recent, especially because of the pricing that I'm hearing about the uh, 7900 XT or whatever it ends up being called, they're basically going to call it like... But this is not obviously the marketing speak. This is how it was kind of described to me by one person, kind of a Titan of Titan class cards. So obviously you've got NVIDIA's Titan class, but AMD are going to be creating like a new almost echelon of performance. And it's going to be really bloody expensive, but it's also going to be really bloody fast. But this means that NVIDIA are going to be slower in performance. They're going to be around 2.4 times. And in fact, they were going to be a little bit slower still, but they basically increased the TDP of the card significantly. And this is one of the reasons that we're hearing that Lovelace RTX 40 is going to be higher than Narve 31 slash RDNA 3. Basically, NVIDIA just cranked up the TDP numbers in an effort to be more competitive. But they also, of course, do have a number of other tricks on this up their sleeve. And I suspect that NVIDIA will want to change the narrative somewhat not just towards traditional rasterization, but to also allow reviewers and, you know, you, who are the people who are buying the damn card, to think of other things in the future, such as how fast things are going to be when images are reconstructed, and also ray tracing performance. I'm also told that Ampere Next, Lovelace if you prefer, features third generation RT cores, which allegedly doubles the ray slash triangle intersection performance versus the RTX 30 series. Basically, NVIDIA have made a number of changes, not just increasing performance across the board in terms of raw computational ability of the RT cores, but they are actually much more efficient and can better utilize the tensor cores of the GPU. I presume, and this is speculation on my part, but it kind of lines up with the direction that NVIDIA have been going in public with DLSS and also what I've been hearing about DLSS 3, that this is probably one of the ways they're going to be doing this. I suspect that they're basically going to be, and again, this is speculation based on what I'm being told, so this could be inaccurate, but I suspect that if they're going to be running ray tracing, they can probably get away with basically, A, 
well, the rays are being generated faster because the hardware is physically faster, but they may be able to just simply generate fewer rays and have a much more complicated denoising algorithm, which again, is possibly a direction they're going to be going. It's going to be really interesting because, yeah, I've had so many people now tell me that DLSS 3 is indeed real. And uh, one person's even told me that they've kind of had evidence of it, but they can't let me know specifics yet. I'm going to be very curious to see NVIDIA's messaging around DLSS 3, particularly given that now we're going to be talking about FSR 2. So Fidelity FX Super Resolution, aka FSR to its buddies, has been quite a success for AMD, both in terms of the PR perspective, but also in terms of its adoption with partners. Now, I don't just mean games developers here, but even Microsoft have given FSR, to a degree anyway, its blessing by incorporating it in its SDKs. And yeah, FSR, in my personal opinion, doesn't look as good as DLSS, right? Like, it just has limitations. It doesn't, for example, take uh, into account uh, motion vectors. And basically, it's a very different reconstruction methodology to DLSS and also XESS when it launches. But overall, I think it does do its job fairly well, and it has enough a benefit, of course, and that is that it's relatively flexible, running across a plethora of devices, cell phones, laptops, high-end PCs, and naturally also, as I just mentioned, consoles. Now, if you want a much more in-depth explanation about FSR, you can check out my video regarding FSR and how Lanchos was actually uh, decided upon by AMD and how they modified it and stuff like that, because I actually collaborated with them on that uh, video. So you can check it out and I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. But ultimately, yeah, if you notice any official documentation really and truly, they specifically mention it's FSR 1.0. So obviously this <laughs> kind of lets you guys know that they are going to be incrementing that version number because otherwise it just doesn't make sense. I've already put out a report that one source has told me that FSR2 is real and now I've had another two sources confirming that it is indeed being worked on. Source 2 has told me they've heard motion vectors are being used and another told me that they've not heard this directly but based on the context that they've been he uh, hearing things that would make sense. The third source also told me, and this is a direct quote, and it's only a short quote because I don't like to quote my sources too much for obvious reasons, expect FSR 1 to 2's quality leap to be comparable with what we saw with DLSS 1 to DLSS 2. Now, what I don't have right now is whether FSR 2 is actually going to be A, exclusive to RDNA 3 and its feature set, and B, what the release schedule for FSR2 is going to be. Now, I do want to focus on whether it's going to be exclusive to RDNA3 for just a moment, and I want to stress this is some speculation, but yeah, one source had originally told me that they were leaning towards it being exclusive. However, I have to say that I'm starting to think more and more that this is not the case. Instead, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just simply going to be faster on RDNA3, and there's a couple of reasons for this. Predominantly, it really comes down to history. And generally speaking, if a company is going in a specific direction, they generally don't do a massive about turn. Um, this is one of the reasons, for example, if you look at console design, you can kind of get an idea of what console manufacturers are going to do based on what they've said previously. And of course, you can also infer things definitely from patents and just the general direction that companies have taken previously from one design to another. You can just kind of say, well, gee, if I look at this design of this CPU or processor or whatever, or sorry, I meant to say GPU, you can say, well, okay, these are the things that excel that, so we know that they're going to improve those. But you know what? That thing was kind of power hungry, or you know what? It kind of sucked in this area, and it wasn't designed to suck in this area, so they're probably going to want to fix that in the next generation, right? You can kind of just kind of infer this stuff. And I think that with AMD, one of the strengths of FSR has definitely been its portability across multiple different devices, right? Multiple different usage scenarios. My feeling, therefore, is that it's probably going to have a speed up 
on RDNA 3 class devices, possibly. Therefore, I suspect that like FSR1 had a fallback for full precision operation rather than FP16, so cards like, for example, the RX480, they were not capable of running FP16 operations. Therefore, if you had an RX480, FSR would still run, although, again, it wouldn't be quite as fast um, to perform its operations simply because it would have to run everything in full precision. And FSR, it doesn't need the precision of full precision. How many times can I say precision in this, in just a couple of paragraphs? Anyway, you guys get my point. Um, so obviously that is something to be aware of. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if AMD either took the XESS kind of route where they have specific operations for RDNA 3 built into the GPU, although honestly there's been no evidence of this at the moment, so I don't know. Or they could even go with lower precision operations, like 8-bit for example. It'll be very interesting to see which route they go. I don't think that they're going to want to alienate console developers either, because my guess is that AMD are going to be creating FSR2 with motion vectors, which is another big thing, you know, they want motion vectors to be incorporated into it, and they want the visual quality to be there, again, for console development, like the Xbox. I'm going to be very interested to see which direction this goes, because the thing is, too, have you guys checked out my PlayStation 5 video, my PlayStation 5 Pro video specifically? One key thing I was told about the PS5 Pro, well, there were a number, including performance targets, but one thing I was told about the PS5 uh, Pro is that Sony allegedly were internally working on a number of image reconstruction technologies, which are obviously part and parcel for its own system, right? Sony have been doing a lot with, for example, checkerboard rendering, and they've been really pushing that, of course, even back in the PS4 era, and they've been using that, of course, quite extensively as well with the PS5. So I suspect Sony possibly are not going to be embracing it, at least their first party studios. Obviously, technically speaking, uh, FSR could run on the PS5, but I suspect that, you know, Sony were not going to be using that, for example, for its first party games, because again, they've got their own reconstruction tech. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out. Then again, with Sony pushing a lot of titles down to the PC, I think, though, the biggest candidate is definitely going to be Microsoft in terms of these collaborations. But, yeah, I mean, upsampling tech is going to be so important, of course, in the grander scheme of things, because also AMD are pushing things like mobile-first uh, solutions. And ultimately, when you're dealing with devices which have a finite power budget, as well as silicon area and all of that, it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out. So just really quickly, going over, you know, what I've been told. So DLSS 3, I'm very, very confident it's going to be released. Major image improvements, again, pretty high in confidence. Third generation ray tracing cores, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious in general. So I'm very confident about this. They've done this with two previous generations, so it makes sense that they're doing it again. Drastic ray tracing performance improvements when DLSS uh, uh, 3.0 is running. Moderate confidence given the sources that I've spoken to, but also predominantly spurred by the direction NVIDIA have just been going in public. I suspect that they're probably going to do this. Um, RTX performance targets are about 2.2 to 2.4 times. RTX 3090, very high confidence. And its power consumption, <laughs> yeah, also very high confidence. Uh, FSR2 being real, high confidence. Uh, big improvements to image quality and motion vectors. Now, yeah. Ultimately, I think the next couple of years in tech is going to be very interesting. I'm particularly curious to see how NVIDIA are going to respond when XE is actually launched, um, both in terms of public as well, uh, in PR, excuse me, but also in terms of like their technology execution. It's going to be very interesting. With all that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.